Donald Trump had a meeting with some of the largest pharmaceutical companies and he wagged his finger, much like Hillary Clinton wagged her finger at the New York Stock Exchange, and told them, you guys got to cut it out. You guys got to do something about these drug prices because they're just too high. Now, um, he had previously made statements about this. In fact, during his first press conference after he had been elected as president, uh, he said the following. Uh, let's go to uh, video number eight. Our drug industry has been disastrous. They're leaving left and right. And the other thing we have to do is create new bidding procedures for the drug industry because uh, they're getting away with murder. Okay, that statement's totally fine. It's just, I don't know why he says industries like that. But nonetheless, <laughs> okay. So I like that he's actually tackling this issue. He deserves credit there. But wagging your finger at pharmaceutical companies probably won't do much. So he says the following to them. You folks have done a tremendous job, but we have to get prices down. We're going to be cutting regulation at a level no one's ever seen before. <laughs> you can't get approval for the plant, and then you can't get approval to make the drug. Other than that, you're doing fantastic. So those were his <laughs> statements while he had these meetings. Like, you can't get approval for the plant, right? Yeah. Uh, I do like that he wants to tackle this issue. Now, we'll see whether or not he's going to follow through and whether or not these pharmaceutical companies will follow suit. Okay. So here's my take on this. I actually like this a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what he's going to do, so that's fair skepticism on your part. Uh, because it's nice to huff and puff, but you actually have to at some point pass a law. And so if he does, though, I'm going to give him a ton of credit. Because this actually goes to Trump's strength. And if he did this, uh, then he actually could be popular and maybe even win re-election. But he'd have to not do all the other crazy things that he does. So this is a populist move to say, hey, wait a minute. Why can't Medicare negotiate drug prices with the drug companies? They're the largest buyer of drugs. We literally pass a law saying that the drug companies rule us all. We're not even allowed to negotiate with them. That's insane. Bush was the first to do that, and I was yelling and screaming when he did. Obama continued that policy, yes. and I, I'm, I lost it. You know, sometimes right wingers now say, "Oh, well, where were you when Obama was doing it?" I was right here yelling at him at the top of my lungs. So now, if he actually takes that away, encourages the Republicans in Congress to pass a law repealing that, saying, "No, no, of course we get to negotiate." That'd be perfect for Trump. Absolutely. That's the art of the deal. He loves mm -hmm. to negotiate. Here he's being strong and saying, now drug companies, the other half, you're right. It's like, go ahead, build any plants you like. I'm going to take away all the regulations and let you run roughshod. But we are going to negotiate prices with you. And, and it's a strong move. It's a populist move. And, and it's logical. So, so there's nothing wrong with that. And, and I hope that he gets this done. So people say, oh, you're just attacking Trump for the, for, because you don't like Trump. No, I don't like his actions. If I like his actions, I'm right there. Let's do this deal right now. By the way, so yes, if he does manage to decrease drug prices, that would be amazing, phenomenal, and he would get credit for that. At the same time, though, he did promise to cut regulations for pharmaceutical companies, and I think that would be disastrous. I mean, look, just to give you an example of a fairly recent federal regulation of pharmaceutical companies, there's the issue of opioid addiction here in the United States, and it was because so many doctors were overprescribing it, and some of those doctors were overprescribing it because they would go on these retreats with pharmaceutical companies, and what happens? You know, you get convinced to give this drug to people who don't even necessarily need it. And so the federal government comes in and realizes, oh my God, there's so many people addicted to painkillers, we need to do something. So they changed the way that the drug is made. So for instance, you can't snort it or it's less addictive. And unfortunately, that had unintended consequences of people then turning to the black market uh, and, and using heroin. But these are people who had already been addicted. It at least was a regulation to prevent future addictions from occurring, right? So that kind of regulation is important. It's super important. And saying, ah, I'm going to get rid of these regulations is dangerous. So this is a little bit of a, you know, there's gradations in this story. Yes, I, I hear you. But I'm going to give Trump one more uh, piece of credit here. Especially vis-a-vis -vis Obama, and, and some I'll drive some Democrats crazy with this, but it's the reality. So Obama, on this negotiating uh, prices with the drug companies, said, "Well, it's nuanced and it's complicated, and I need to make the drug companies happy so that I could pass the Affordable Care Act, and it's this whole jigsaw puzzle, and I'm playing third dimension, uh, three-dimensional three dimensional chess, right? There's a good truth in that. That's true. It was a jigsaw puzzle." But then at some point, you could just do what Trump does and proceed from strength and go, 
Oh yeah, nice jigsaw puzzle. Okay, yeah, here, here's your jigsaw puzzle. Okay, hey, what the hell are you doing? What do you mean I can't negotiate prices with you? Of course I can negotiate prices with you. I'm the government. I'm the biggest buyer of drugs. Here, I'm negotiating prices. What are you going to do about it? Now that is not in Obama's DNA. He just never was going to do that, and that led to Democrats not making their case and kind of being mealy mouth about it. And next thing you know, they got destroyed throughout their country in in the elections. So there's a good reason for strength. So I wish that Trump would use it for good a lot more. He used it like five percent of the time for everybody else's good, and ninety-five percent of the time for the good of him and his billionaire buddies in his cabinet. If you sign up for TYT membership, you'll be saying, "Thanks a lot, bitch." <laughs> TYTnetwork.com/slash/join.